Hi, this is your host David Flattendarrow, and on this week's Nature for Idiots, we're going to learn about everyone's favorite pollinator, the spectacular bumblebee. Many would say the average bumblebee is rather promiscuous, spending its days traveling from flower to flower, spreading the sperm or pollen from one flower's stamen to the stigma or vagina of another flower. So basically, the bumblebee is a flying version of your favorite comrade, except it impregnates every flower vagina it comes in contact with. Just imagine the implications if your mother was ever to pick up a dirty sock. Some plants, such as blueberries, tomatoes, and uh, eggplants, require a bit more of a vigorous approach than others. For these tougher plants, the bee begins by firmly grasping the stamen of a flower. It then decouples its flight muscles from its wings and uses them to vigorously stimulate the stamen of the flower until it releases its precious pollen while also grabbing a sip of nectar for itself. You see, the problem in nature persists that without bees and other pollinators alike, plants would not be able to reproduce. They simply need a threesome to get off. Once covered in the dust of life, the bee travels to the next flower, transferring the pollen from one flower to the next. Arguably one of the most important symbiotic relationships in nature is that of the pollinators and the pollinated. You see, although most flowers contain both male and female parts, they cannot breed with themselves, which is why they require a pollinator such as the bumblebee to transfer the pollen from one flower to another flower of the same breed. Since they can't pollinate themselves without bees, all the plants around us would simply self-ejaculate until they die off. A truly sad way for any species to go, don't you think? Upon the discovery of a viable nectar source, the bee must travel back to the hive to inform her colleagues of its location. Using a mathematical dance, the bee informs her sisterhood exactly where it is all going down. The duration of her wiggle tells them exactly how far the nectar source is, and the angle she dances across the comb correlates to the direction of the party in relation to the sun. Bees are responsible for all our favorite fruits and vegetables. And even if you don't like fruits and vegetables because your parents are too stupid to give you one when you're a young guy and teach you the importance of them, animals that you do eat need plants. In fact, most animals eat plants, and those who don't rely on eating other animals that do. So, no bees equals no plants, and no plants equals no us. Thank you for listening along with your host, David Flattendarrow. Stay tuned in for the next episode of... Nature for Idiots.